Well, uh, yeah, I wrote about this sometimes, how I found that on the beaches of Rio. Okay. Uh, and so, so uh, I was mainly a topologist, but I did some investigations into dynamical systems, to ordinary differential equations, uh, in a year or two, especially after my thesis in Chicago. And I made some very, uh, well, bad predictions. But I, uh, I published some papers on it. The papers were pretty good in general, but I made some conjectures that were wrong, and uh, Coddington, or Levinson at MIT pointed it out because there was these old papers of uh, uh, these English pair of mathematicians uh, who, you know, didn't, they had numerical work and they had interesting results and uh, contradicted what I had predicted, so I wanted to understand what they did. So I put that what they did in a very uh, geometric context so I could understand it. And that uh, was the horseshoe. The horseshoe was kind of a geometrical picture of what they were computing. And it was actually, it turns out, to tie in with the Poincaré had the same mess of, you get a big mess, and this put order in the mess. <laughs> and that's why I said, I, you know, I, the work on the beaches of Rio, because <laughs> I worked in the beaches at the time. So it was sort of inspired by Poincaré's mess? No, okay. no, not at all, mm -hmm. because that came uh, later. When I, in the next, you know, after I found this horseshoe, then I began to understand and look for what people had done, and then I found uh, Poincaré's paper. What is it about it that captures so much of chaotic motion? Is it the homoclinic thing, the squeezing and the stretching? Like, is there a way you could give an intuitive, an intuitive ex description of why it's universal? Dynamics is a subtle thing. So this is il illustrated by the dynamics, the dynamical process. And uh, what it does is allow one, in this horseshoe picture, you keep iterating it, it doubles once and it doubles four times and so on. And it allows one to find this set of the dynamics, of the states of the dynamics. It's a set, a uh, nice robust set, uh, which could be uh, indexed by zeros and ones. So it uh, can be interpreted uh, with the dynamics as flipping a coin. And so it it gets at the root of chaos that way because here we have a deterministic system. These are differential equations. Uh, simple differential equations, very smooth. And uh, they have this phenomena which can uh, be interpreted in terms of sequences of coin flipping. So it makes a transition convincingly, I think. Everybody would, say, would agree with me. The passage from deterministic dynamics of the Newtonian type and two, uh, you know, purely probabilistic phenomena, the flipping of a coin. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. Some, because uh, I think I was working uh, in dynamics, differential equations in Brazil, because of Mauricio, uh, I worked out some of this, what's called gradient dynamics from manifolds. I was always looking at everything on the manifold. I had a topological background. So uh, looking at these dynamics, this dynamical system on the manifold, allowed them <coughs> you to see the structure of the manifold much better than other structures. If you, if you take cells, corresponding to the equilibria of this gradient dynamics, and then you can build up the uh, manifold that way, and then you can start simplifying it. So that played uh, a role. Then I, I had worked, uh, failed to solve Poincaré's conjecture and crazy, naive attempts while I was in college. Mm -hmm. but, so I knew about it, and I said, uh, I, you know, I was a topologist too, so I knew about it from many points of view. But then I said, this dynamics might give me a better picture of what the uh, manifolds look like. 
first it was the dynamics, and then the uh, topology. All happened in that six months I was in uh, Rio.